But this morning, you come to church with you stand on your feet. Hey, we're going to party in the house of the Lord this morning. It's going to be a good time. Let's worship our kids out. Here we go. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. Cause you found, you freed me, held back the waters of my release. Oh, Yahweh. Let's sing this again. Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of Hallelujah, hallelujah, cause you have torn apart the sea, you have made me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Come on, can anybody testify of that goodness? Yes. Let's sing this out, cloud by day. The cloud by day. The sign that you are with me In the fire by night A God in light to my You see, you found me Cause you found me You freed me Held back the waters from my release Oh, Yahweh Cause you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory I You're the God who fights for me, Lord, and every victory I need, I need you. Cause you are so important to see, you are the way to be, I need you, I need Let's have some fun. Let's sing this out. Cause you stepped into my union. You took me by you. You marched me out of freedom. Into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing it for your time. Death this water forever. By the fear, come on, let's sing it again. Cause you stepped into my Egypt. And you took me by the end. You marked me out of here. Into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing a boy down to the face my Lord of the river by the beauty of your name. Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you have torn upon the sea, you have Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Come on, do you believe that this morning? Well, amen, church. We're going to continue worshiping our good God.
a new song we've been singing for only a few weeks now, but the lyrics will be on the screen. Would you sing it with me? It goes like this. And I have tasted, I have seen The realness of your love for me It's written on his feet It's all the evidence I'll ever need Yeah It's your love is better than life I can't even wrap my mind around it One day, give me your arms Better than a thousand I swear your love keeps on Yeah, come on Running keeps on running after me yeah. Keeps on running Oh, there's no one that can take your place. Come on, church. Oh, there's nothing that can separate. No. Oh, I, how I, I need your love. The greatest love the world has ever seen. Yeah. Your love. One day, give me your love Better than a thousand hours Where your love keeps on running Running, keeps on running out to me Keeps on running Running, keeps on running out to me Run, 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 run,
know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same. For me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How oh, I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faith. You are 
ages I'm standing on your faithfulness on your faithfulness oh, we thank you Jesus that you're the same God you're the same God that you're a man of your church that's good news that our God is the same it's always a good reminder I don't invite you to hear that song when our hearts cry oh God my God I need you and the bridge of that song you answer prayers then and he will answer now that's the truth for us today church our God is a good God he wasn't just a good guy for the people in the Bible, like Moses, like David, but personally for you this morning. Maybe life has been amazing. Maybe life has been awesome for you this week. It's awesome. This morning, for those of you that you feel like, I just can't catch a break, feel like everything is just piling on top of each other. My life seems chaotic. I feel like I'm just running and running and running. Can I encourage you this morning, family, that we serve the same God, the same God that split the Red Sea for the Israelites to walk on, the same God that closed the mouth of the lion. He's the same God today. All of those miracles and all those things that he did then, he can do them today. If you need a healing in your body, he can do that today. If you need a breakthrough in your marriage, he can do that today. If you need financial provision, he can do that today. All you got to do is set your eyes on him. And how do we do that? Yes, you can look up. But it's our hearts, family. Is your heart postured this morning? And is it aligned with God? Because when it is, we're going to sing this chorus one more time, but when it is, you'll know. Because it's not only just a thing that you know in your, in your head about God, but you know in your heart. It's this pulling and this desperation that, oh God, my God, I need you. When you surrender it to him, that's where the breakthrough happens. And so let's sing this chorus one more time. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I need you now, because that's the truth, right? He's the firm foundation, the cornerstone of our faith. When we stand on him, when we root ourselves in him, everything else changes. When the storms of life comes, they won't shake us, family. And so with desperation in our heart, let's sing this one more time. And so, oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. And how I need you now And oh, 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 rock, oh, rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness And on your faith Come on, sing one more time, just the voices And oh, God, my God, I need you Oh, God, my God, I need you and how I need you now, oh rock. And so rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. And on your faithfulness. God, thank you that you're the same God, that we can trust in you. That when things get hard, when things get tough, God, we can look to you, not with our eyes, Lord, but with our hearts. That when our hearts are postured towards you, when we get on our knees and we say, oh God, we need you, that's where the life change happens, Lord. You see our hearts, Lord. Your word actually says that you lean in to what we have to say. In other words, you care about us, Father. It wasn't just for the people in the Bible, but you're still the same God today, and we thank you for that. Pray that somebody would leave encouraged. Believe that faith is rising in the room right now. Would you remind them this morning, God, 
you've never left them, and you're not going to leave them, and that you are the same God. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here in this place. We pray that you'd be with us in the rest of the service. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Let's make some noise for Jesus, church. Welcome to Compassion and happy 4th of July weekend. My name is Maddie and we are so glad that you are here with us this morning. If you look on your seat right behind you, you'll notice a connect card just like this. If you would, just hold it up, wave it around at me. Let me know you're awake this morning. Well, hey, if you're new here, we encourage you to fill the front of this card out. We promise we're not going to spam you with a bunch of phone calls and texts and emails, but we really just want to get to know you a little bit. On the back of that card is a prayer request section. If you or someone you know is in need of prayer, we encourage you to fill this section out. Our team meets every week to go over your prayer requests and to pray over each and every one of them. You can drop this card off in the offering buckets at the end of service. So many of you come to Compassion with a heart of generosity. In the recent weeks, we've seen how your generous giving has made an impact not only here in Gilbert, but globally. Here are three different ways that you can give. Now, how many of you have been to Compassion Culture before? Anybody out there? Well, hey, if you're new here or maybe you've been coming to Compassion for a while, we encourage you to get signed up with Compassion Culture. This is our two-week course designed for you to get to know us, our team, and our mission a little bit better, but also for us to get to know you a little bit better. You can sign up today out on the patio by the Connect Tent. In the last month, we had a really awesome outreach event at Feed My Starving Children. We just want to thank you guys so much for showing up and serving with compassion. This next month in July, we're going to have another outreach event. It's going to be a two-part outreach event. We'll have a backpack drive for the first part. You'll be able to donate backpacks and school supplies for the students who are going to school in the next few weeks. The second part is a volunteer-based outreach. You can sign up using the QR code. This is an opportunity for you to go to downtown Phoenix and hand out the backpacks and school supplies that you donated. Now, can I just get a raise of hand? Who has been having an amazing time at Summer Splash Bash here at Compassion? It's been so much fun and we're just so thankful that you guys have been coming out. We just want to remind you that Summer Splash Bash is all summer long, so you still have time to invite your friends, your family, and to just come out and enjoy the summer here at Compassion. Now, if you've never been baptized before and you are looking to get baptized, we encourage you to sign up for Baptism Sunday on July 30th. You can use the QR code above. This is a perfect opportunity for you to bring your friends and your family and to come celebrate your faith out loud. Now, if you would, please turn your eyes to the screen. We're going to hear a small message from Pastor Meyer. Happy Sunday, Compassion Church family. I wanted to say, hey, y'all, because I'm back in the South eating some good food, doing some fishing, and hanging out with my family, recharging for a new season of ministry. And I'm glad you're here today. It's going to be an awesome service. I'm glad that you're going forward this summer, not getting in a spiritual slump. God's got spiritual victory for you today, and I'm excited about what he's doing in your life. Keep on going. While I'm away recharging, I'm excited about Josh bringing the message today. I want you to put your hands together and make some noise for Josh as he comes to give us the word. Man, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I'm honored that I get to be here with you guys. I'm honored that God would get to use me as a vessel for you guys this morning. So I'm hoping that he has something great for you. You know... This is my, I'm, a, I'm the youth pastor here at Compassion, um, and it wouldn't be without the, that I need to share a picture of my family, because that's what all pa pastors do, right? When, the, when they come up on stage, they share a picture of their family. So, this is my family. Uh, this is my wife, Addie, my rock, my couldn't do this without her person. Um, she is also the kids director here at Compassion, if you have been coming here for a while. Um, she is amazing and, again, could not do this without her. So if she's watching or listening later, remember that. Also, this is my daughter, Finley. She is one and a half years old. And if you know Finley, if you've ever been around her, she is a joy to every single room she walks into. And she will wave and smile at anything that moves, whether it's a person, a dog, a cat. And she just loves people. She loves animals, and she is amazing, except for Kyle, apparently. He told me that earlier that she will not wave at Kyle, but that's okay. So if you're Kyle, I'm sorry. 
But I want to tell you a story about when I was younger. I was about 10 years old, maybe 11, give or take. And me and my dad got in a huge fight, got in a big argument. We, I don't even remember what it was about because it was a long time ago. And, you know, I just remember that it was big. I don't remember the context. I don't remember what it was about. I just know it was a big fight. And it got really big, got heated. My dad's like, okay, you know, we're done. Go to your room. And so I got sent to my room. So I run up to my room. I slam the door to prove a point that I'm right and he's wrong. I lock the door. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm never coming out of this room again. I'm never going to leave this room. This is now my home. Don't want to be with my family. I'm done with them. Who cares about them? So about 10 minutes pass and I get bored. Uh, you know what? This isn't going to work. And so I made a decision. You know what? Since I don't want to be with my family, I'm bored in this room, I'm going to run away. I'm going to take off and I'm never coming back. And so I gather a backpack, put a, you know, a couple changes of clothes in there and my whole $3.46 of all change and I take off. I go out the window, and I'm like, I'm never coming back. Kept the door locked because I didn't want them to know I left. Go out the window, I go to my garage, which is open, and I'm like, you know, I need transportation. I'm not walking anywhere. And so the best transportation I had at the time was called a ripstick. I don't know if you ever heard of these. There's a picture. This is a ripstick. Okay, it's like a little kind of skateboard thing. So I grab my ripstick, 10 years old, and I take off down the street at the very front of our neighborhood, uh, there was like a little strip mall with a gas station and, and stuff. And so I went to the gas station with my $3.46, and I got a drink and a little snack, and I was out of money. And then, really, the, the, the true reason why I ran away is because there was a store in the front called Goober Games. It was like a video game store. And they had free video games to play, right? Like, you could go and try out the games. So it was like... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live there. I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. I'm just going to go play video games. And so I get to the store, and, and it's great. I'm playing video games. I'm having fun. I got my drink, my snack. And about 30 minutes later, uh, the store owner's like, hey, we're closing. I'm like, what? I thought I could do this forever. And so the store owner closes, you know, tells me I got to leave, kicks me out. And I'm like, oh, man, now what am I going to do? I'm stuck here. Nothing's open. I have no more money. And it's hot outside because it was Arizona. And so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go home. So I ride my ripstick back home. And I go through the garage, run upstairs, pick the lock to my door, and go inside. And my dad to this day never knows I ran away. And let me tell you, it was only about an hour. So he probably wouldn't even noticed. So I ran away, and, and it's a great story, it's funny, but I want to ask you this question, have you ever tried to run away? Have you ever tried to run away from something in your life? I'm not talking about running away from your parents when you were little. I'm talking about, have you ever tried to run away from responsibility, or run away from a consequence of an action? Have you tried to run away from people in your life? Maybe, maybe you're even trying to run away from God. My question for you this morning, have you ever tried to run away? The story we're going to be talking about this morning comes from the passage of Jonah. Uh, this guy named Jonah was a prophet of God, basically a messenger of God would tell him what to tell the people. And so this prophet, this guy Jonah, is called to go do something. And he has a hard time with this. So we're going to pull up this passage comes starting in John chapter one, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. If you have a Bible, that's cool. We're going to be kind of going along through this. If not, it will be on the screen as well. So this is what happens. So the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. First of all, Jonah, the original meaning of Jonah means dove, which I think is kind of funny and ironic. You'll understand why in a second. He, the Lord says, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and he went in the opposite direction 
to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. You see, Jonah means dove. I think it's funny because Jonah chose to fly away and run away from his responsibilities that God had called him to. I'm going to give you a little backstory on this. Nineveh is a place, a uh, little history lesson for you. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, one of the first biggest, greatest empires. And Nineveh was the capital. It was the biggest city in the whole world at the time. And it was also one of the worst, wicked, bad, sinful, cruel places. They taught their kids warfare in middle school and elementary school. They, they murdered, they killed, they stole. These were just really bad dudes, right? And they were the first people ever to use iron weapons. So if you think about that, bringing a sword to a gunfight doesn't work, well, they brought the gunfight. So they were the biggest, baddest war enemies of all time, of their time period. And that brings me to my first point. Number one, sometimes God's call is challenging. Sometimes God's call is challenging. It's not always going to be this easy thing to do. Sometimes he's going to call us to do something we might not want to do. He's going to call us to do something that's a little uncomfortable, that might be hard, that might require effort. And it's our choice to do what we do with it. You know, I think it's funny. When, when Jonah got this call from God, he asked, God had told him, go to Nineveh, please. I need you to go here. I need you to tell these people they need to follow me and stop being so wicked. And so Jonah gets to this place uh, called Joppa where there's a boat ready for him to leave, to go as far away as possible from what God was calling him to I think it's interesting how often in times in our life, when God's calling us to something big, there's always another boat or distraction ready for us to take us in the opposite direction. When God's calling us to something big, the the Satan, the devil, is going to bring a distraction, bring another boat in our life to take us and sail us away as far as possible. And it was ready. It was ready for him. He found it, and it was ready. Sometimes God's call is challenging. You know, we just got back from summer camp. Our, our youth went to summer camp uh, last week. It was amazing. It was awesome. It was crazy. It was fun. It was basically every emotion you can think of happened while we were at camp. But it was life-changing, and God used it for amazing, awesome opportunities in our students. I asked some of our students to share some stories about what God was doing in their life while they were at camp. And this is one of them. I'm going to share the story of a girl named Braylin. Uh, she, she wrote this to me. She said, on Wednesday night when a video played during one of the sessions showing people who had sponsored kids, it made me devastated to realize just how many kids are living in poverty. And that made me very emotional. That night, I was sitting crying while thinking about if I should contribute to the organization. I just felt God calling me to do it. I had this gut feeling that was pushing me to help change a kid's life. One thing I took from camp is that teens can make a difference in the world. And before that night, I didn't know how God would use me to help others and to help people learn the word of God. But that night, I had a strong gut feeling telling me that I had to do it. And that I could do it. For a couple years now, I've been saving money for a car since I can drive in about a year and get my license. But I know that God doesn't want me to use the money for a car, but to change a kid's life. I have everything I need in life and more. And there are people who need the money more than I do. Knowing that I am able to make an impact this young and change a kid's life brings me way more joy than a car ever would. You see, Braylon was called to do something challenging. She was called to give up 
everything she had worked so hard for, all that money, which in of itself is a big feat for a young teenager, to work hard and save money for a car. And she said, you know what, God's calling me to give this up. Because I know that there is a kid out there that I probably will never even meet that needs the money so that they can, one, have food and live, but two, to be able to hear and learn the word of God. That's challenging. And she stepped up to that challenge. Sometimes God's call is challenging. And it's our job to follow it. You know, we get back to Jonah And it's funny, he didn't just get on a boat and run away from God. He got as far as possible away from God. This is a map of where he went. So point A is where where Jonah was, if you can see it. And then point B is Nineveh. That's where God asked him to go. Instead, he went all the way across the sea to point C, to Tarshish. It was about 3,000 miles away. Basically, the known world at the time. He went all the way across the known world. He was on one side and he went all the way to the other side. They didn't know anything more at the time. Hadn't been discovered yet. And so he goes to this place, Tarshish, about 3,000 miles away. We continue on in the story in in verse 4. It says this, But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. You see, Jonah got on a boat with sailors. Sailors do this for a living, okay? These are, these are experts at their job. This is what they do. And even these sailors, as we go on in the story, even these sailors were awestruck at this storm and how big and powerful it was. They, they were trying their hardest to get out of it, but even these experts couldn't get out of this storm. It was so big. And so they realized this must be the work of God or a God. They didn't believe in in the one true God. So they started praying and asking their gods, hey, what's going on? Can you please save us? What, What is happening? Meanwhile, Jonah is sleeping somehow in a storm. And they wake Jonah up and they ask him, hey, what is going on? Did you do something that is causing this storm? And Jonah, right away, he knows, yes, I ran away from what God was calling me to do. And so God is sending this storm to stop me from running away. He's sending this storm because of me. And so what Jonah does next is he he tells the sailors, you know what? In order for you guys to be safe, in order for you guys to live, I need you to take me and throw me overboard. Throw me into the sea. Because that is what God is wanting. That's what God is calling. And so they take him and they throw him over the sea, over the overboard into the sea. And right away, the storm stops. The seas subside. The winds stop. The rain stops. And it's a perfect day. And Jonah knows, man, this, this is what God was trying to do. He was trying to get to me. And so what happens next, if you know the story at all, a big giant fish comes and he swallows up Jonah. And he lives in this fish for three whole days. And while he's in the fish, he's praying and he's lamenting. He's telling God, I'm sorry, forgive me. I know what I did was wrong. And three days later, he gets spit out, back out onto the shore. When you run from God, Sometimes he may use a storm to stop you. When you run from God, sometimes he may use a storm to stop you. You know, when I graduated high school, I had a choice to make. There was basically two colleges that I could choose to go to. The first one was here in Arizona, where I could stay at home, save money, go to a great school here. And the second one was all the way in Iowa. It was a small school. Um, and so I went and I visited both. I did all the things, you know, got all the free stuff and the shirts and the, the lanyards, all that. And I, I, when I went to the school in Iowa, the, the promise to me was that I would be able to play basketball. I would be able to start. I would be able to get a lot of playing time. I major in business, and it would be great. Exactly what I've always wanted to do. 
I love basketball. I love this sport, and that's what I want to do. And so I go and I visit, and we go through all the stuff. I meet with the coaches. I even practice with the team. And on the day I'm, I'm supposed to be leaving to come back home, God sends a storm. I think God sent a storm. But it was a blizzard, like one of the worst blizzards you could ever, like, imagine. Literally, I was stuck there for three days waiting for this blizzard to come, to go through. Airplanes couldn't leave. Cars weren't even driving on the roads. Everyone was just stuck in their houses. So I was just stuck in the house with some people I didn't really know because I was just visiting for three days. That was fun. Well, God used this storm in my life, a literal storm, to help me understand I'm not supposed to go to Iowa. I cannot stand the cold. (laughs) That was way too cold for me, right? I mean, I can't do that. No way. So God used this storm, right, to to show me maybe this isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, And at the exact same time during that summer uh, between my senior year of high school and and, and college, I met this girl. Uh, She lived here in Arizona. Um, I showed a picture of you earlier, so it's the same girl. Uh, uh, and, and she lived here in Arizona, and so, you know, I, I believe wholeheartedly that God put her in my life to say, this is where you're supposed to be, this is where I've called you to be, and I don't want you to run from what I'm calling you to do. Because what happened was, I came here, I went to school at Arizona Christian University here, I didn't play basketball, I didn't major in business, and, and now I'm up here, <laughs> talking to you guys. So this is not what God, I, I had planned for me. This is what God had planned for me, and I tried to run from it. Sometimes God's going to send a storm to stop you. But what's cool is God brought a bad experience in my life, in Jonah's life, in order to bring about a magnificent one. God brought a bad experience in my life in order to push me towards a greater purpose. Sometimes storms are going to happen in our life, and it's our choice to look for what God is trying to do in them. Since I'm the youth pastor, I'm going to keep using these awesome youth uh, students' stories. Uh, we have another, I had another story of a, a girl at camp um, that just wrecked me. Um, but it's just an amazing story about how God can send storms sometimes in our life. But he's going to always be coming back and always there for us. So this story of a girl named Jasmine at camp, and this is what she sent me. She said, sometimes people don't realize the true life change that can happen at camp. I know I didn't. I didn't understand what people meant with the phrase being born again or chains breaking. Not until this year at least. A couple years ago, I felt a large burden fall onto my shoulders, a mental issue that changed the way I lived life. I no longer valued anything. I couldn't ever feel truly present wherever I was. Of course, I knew God, and I knew all the stories that had been told in church, but I could never feel his presence. I prayed to God to make it all go away, but it never worked. I became flooded with doubts of my religion. Church became just another place to kill time and see friends. But without the hope of life after death, I closed off from the world and even felt like life was no longer worth living. I was completely hopeless, but God never lets our stories end there. During the last night at camp, a song began to play, and I felt a presence in the room that I could only describe as heavenly. I knew that God was there, so I prayed to him begging for a release from the imprisonment of my own mind. This prayer was different than anything I had experienced before. Instead of it being as if I was speaking into a telephone with a clipped wire, it felt as if I was speaking face to face with God. As I closed my eyes, I could feel his presence, and as I cried to him, I knew he wept with me. I prayed for him to finally chase Satan away from me, for him to stop plaguing my mind with doubts and hopelessness, Then the song ended and I opened my eyes. This will definitely be hard for some to believe, especially since I could hardly believe it myself, but I opened my eyes to see a world full of color once more. 
It was as if I had been living in black and white for years and had gotten reintroduced to a life of vibrant colors. I immediately began sobbing as I looked around at the faces in the crowd. crowd. I felt present and in the moment, a feeling I hadn't felt in years. There was literally a visible difference in everything I saw. I could see and appreciate the little details. I began to uncontrollably cry, telling people, it's gone, it's gone. I ran outside to look around and I saw the clouds for the first time in years, when I could see how truly beautiful it all was. I fell to my knees and sobbed, and in that moment I felt what someone would call a Holy Spirit hug, where I somehow physically felt the heavenly embrace of Jesus Christ. When I went back into the service, I couldn't stop looking around and crying at the sight of everything around me. It was as if I had been on, on autopilot and I was sleeping for years and God had woken me up. Now, don't get me wrong, my problems didn't completely disappear. And even now, I feel Satan creeping in trying to take my newfound freedom. But by knowing I can now fight him off with the power of Jesus on my side, I have hope that I can make it through this and anything else I will have to endure. My point number two today is don't mistake God's protection for punishment. Don't mistake God's protection for punishment. See, the story of Jonah being thrown overboard, swallowed by a fish, some would say, man, that's a punishment for what Jonah decided to do because he ran off. But it's actually a story of hope for us. It's a story of hope. Because we see that what God was doing was protecting Jonah from what he thought was the right way. And what he thought he needed to do. But God protected him by swallowing him up in a fish and sending him back to where he was supposed to go. Don't protect the storms in your life. Don't think that the storms in your life are punishment. But think them of them as protection for what God is trying to do in your life. We keep m- moving on into the story and we get to Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 it says this Jonah chapter 3 1 through 5 says then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time this is after he gets spit out again by a whale he spoke to Jonah a second time get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you And this time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. And on the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed God's message. He literally gave him a second chance. He said a second time. He asked him the exact same thing. See, God wasn't punishing Jonah. He was protecting him to give him a second chance. You know, I was scrolling through YouTube like us youngins do. I'm still hip with the times, you know. I try to be. I'm not. My youth make fun of me all the time. Uh, But I was scrolling through YouTube, and I I started seeing these videos on YouTube of these guys that were, they were creating art. They were artists. And they were creating art, which I cannot do at all. I try to draw a circle, and I cannot. They were creating art, and they were creating art out of dice, okay? So I have a couple pictures. Uh, The first one is of the goat, Michael Jordan. And and there's no debate, so we can talk after if you want, but he is the goat. Uh, Michael Jordan, they created this all out of dice, okay? The next one uh, is Kobe Bryant. Man, Kobe Bryant, again, all out of dice, even the intricate details of the shadowing, and the jersey. This is all out of dice. And then the YouTube algorithm kept making me see different artists creating things. And so I came up with this, these next pictures of these people that created art using an Etch-a-Sketch. So I brought an Etch-a-Sketch with me right here. They're creating art using an Etch-a-Sketch. Okay, here's one. Here's another one. I mean, I can't even understand The, the Last Supper... Like, that's so much detail in that. Guys, I try to use this, and I can't even make stairs. I'm, I, I try to use this, and I try to make some stairs, and I mess up. 
because they're not even, and then I don't know what to do. The cool thing is you get a second chance, right? We could take this, and we get to shake it, and it's a clean slate. It's a second chance. See, our God is the same way. Whenever you mess up, whenever you make a mistake, whenever you move the wrong way, whenever you do the wrong thing, he's right there to say, man, you get a second chance. I'm giving you a second chance. I'm giving you a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, a hundredth chance. I have infinite chances for you if you just choose to follow me. Maybe you messed up in your life and you let someone in your life that you know you shouldn't have. And I don't know what to do now. Talk to Jesus. Maybe you've gotten yourself caught up in an addiction. You don't know how to to get over it. You keep struggling with it over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But you keep doing it. Turn to Jesus because he can make it new. He can give you freedom. My third and final point is this. Jesus is not calling you to perfection. He's calling you to progression. He's not asking you to be this perfect person. He's not asking you to ever not make a mistake. He's asking you to take a step in progression towards him every day. He wants to set you free for a greater purpose. That thing that you think disqualifies you from being able to be loved, to be seen and be known by God is the exact thing he's trying to use to tell you he loves you, he sees you, and he knows you. That thing you think disqualifies you from being able to be loved, seen, and known by God is the exact thing God is trying to use to show you he loves, sees, and knows you. That addiction you can't get over because you man, I will never have enough, I will never be enough, I will never do enough. The insecurities inside you that make you feel like this, there's no way God could love me. There's no way God would give me another chance. Those do not disqualify you. In fact, it's the opposite. They qualify you to be loved and known and seen by God. I love this story that someone once shared to me that has made a huge impact in my life. It's the story of the refining fire is what he called it. And basically this idea that back in in the day and and a long time ago, these people used to use a a refining uh, furnace to refine and purify metal. We'll, We'll go with gold. And they would take the gold and they would heat up this furnace super hot, super, super hot. And they put the gold in it, the ore in it, and it would melt down into a liquid. And what that would do is that it would separate the impurities, the imperfections, the substances that are not supposed to be in the gold to create a purified version of gold until it's 100% pure. And so they would do this process over and over again. They'd put it in the furnace, and then they'd take it out, and they'd see, is it perfect? They'd put it in the furnace, they'd take it out, is it perfect? They'd put it in the furnace, they'd take it out, is it perfect? And they'd do that over and over and over again until it was done. And the way that they saw that it was done is because they could see their own reflection in the gold. It was so pure that they could see their own reflection. You see, God might put us through fire. He might put us through storms. He might put us through circumstances that just suck, that just are horrible, and we can't understand it. But we can know on the other side, he's using it for a purpose, to refine us. And it takes steps. It takes multiple steps so that eventually, over time as we go, we can become more and more a reflection of Jesus. We become more and more a reflection of what God is and who he is so that when people look at us, they don't even see us. 
They just see the reflection of the creator. See, Jonah took a small step toward a bigger purpose. He went to Nineveh and they believed, which generationally changed the course of history. The people that chose to believe in Nineveh, now to this date, their ancestors, their, their generation, the line, is still Christian to this very day. That's thousands and thousands of people that have changed because of one person's obedience to what God was calling them to, even though it was challenging. What is God calling you to today that you need to take a step towards? It could be a simple little step. Like, man, I just need to start praying a little bit more. I don't pray enough. I don't talk to God enough. I want to have a a relationship with him, so I need to communicate with him. Right? Maybe the small step is starting to hang out with people that are not bringing me down and not holding me back from what God is calling me to do, that are not a bad influence on me, that are causing me to struggle. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe someone hurts you. Maybe you're a spouse or a family member, a a parent, a friend. Maybe they hurt you and you become bitter. You started having resentment and that relationship is no longer what it used to be. Maybe your step today is to ask for forgiveness. Or maybe you're on the other side and you need to give forgiveness. Maybe you're here today and you've hurt someone else and you know it. And I I know I hurt them. I know I made that mistake. And you still haven't even talked about it. You haven't given them forgiveness. I'm telling you right now, when you give forgiveness, it does way more for you than it does for them. There's a weight that comes off your shoulders. Maybe that's your step today. Maybe you've been coming to church for a while. You're new to this, but you've been coming for a while. You love the worship. You love the messages. You love the community. But you want to take another step. You want to get more involved. Maybe your next step, maybe your step towards Jesus is to start serving. Right? Maybe start serving in kids. Because I know kids is challenging. Sometimes God's call is challenging. Maybe that's your step. I don't know if God's calling you to that, but I hope he is. We need help in kids. Maybe your next step is, man, I've been a Christian for a little while. I've given my life to Christ, but I want to proclaim that to the world. I want to tell people about that. Maybe your next step is to get baptized. You're like, hey, I want to publicly declare my faith to the people around me. And so I'm going to get baptized to show that to everyone. Or maybe you're here this morning and your next step is your first step. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never said yes to Jesus. You've never taken that step or that commitment to say, I want to follow Jesus and live the Jesus way. What's cool is we're going to give you that opportunity right now. We're going to pray a prayer. You guys can repeat after me in your head, in your out loud, whatever you want to do. But if you want that opportunity right now to give your life to Christ, to say, I'm committing to following this Jesus way, We're going to give you that opportunity right now, and you can pray this prayer with me. Let's pray together. Dear God, I'm sorry for the mistakes and the sin that I've made. I ask that you would forgive me and give me a second chance. I believe that you are God and that you died on the cross and you rose again, forgiving all sin, past, present, and future. I choose right now to follow you. I commit my life to you for the rest of my life.
Now, if you did that for the first time this morning, one, we're so excited for you. Can we just give it up for those people that might have made the best decision they could have ever made in their entire life? That step right there is just one step in the journey God is calling us to, right? He's not calling us to perfection. He's not calling us, he's calling us to progression. So if you made that decision, I just wanna encourage you right now, there's a card in front of you on the seat. It says, I said yes to Jesus. Just fill that card out because that allows us to help you guys on your journey with Christ. Or you can come find us out at the connect tent outside and we can talk more about what does it mean to follow Jesus. I just, I made this commitment, I made this decision and now I wanna know how to do it better. You can come find us outside and we'd love to talk to you more about that as well. You know, sometimes we have storms in our life. Sometimes we have fire that just hurts. We don't know how to get through it, but we can know that God is using them for a purpose, for his purpose, that he's not using them to punish us because the punishment has already been paid. It's already null and void, it's done. We don't have to worry about the punishment. He's doing it to protect us and to grow us and give us opportunities to take a step towards what it means to be more and more like Jesus. So God, I pray again right now that you would give us opportunities to take steps daily, weekly, monthly. That you would just give us these opportunities to take steps to become more and more like you so that over time your reflection would start to show through us to the people around us. I pray for people in this room that are going through storms, that are going through fire, that you would give them a hope and a peace right now, knowing that it's your protection and your purpose that is creating a better version of them. I pray all of this in your mighty name. Amen. Amen, Finn. Well, can we stand to our feet? Well, what an amazing message from Pastor Josh today. We're going to worship one more time together. Let's do it. We love you, Jesus. Sing of Carrie DeVert. And I'll carry the burden for too long. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I keep your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, laid it down, and I know that I. Father, fall in the grace, and done with the heart, the reason the way, my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father. Your son for redemption, the price for my own. I don't have a cause for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is.
Pastor Josh said in the beginning of his sermon when he was talking about Jonah and Jonah running off so far. It's so funny to see how small and how close where God wanted Jonah to go to was and how far he ran the opposite way. I want to encourage you this morning to run after God. The thing that he has for you, it may be uncomfortable. It may feel like the storms are life coming around. Maybe it's a sign for you to turn back around. Maybe that's not the right place. But God has a plan for you. He said that in his word that he knows the plans he has for for your life. He has a cross for you to give you a hope and a future. You know, I was I think it was actually, I think my dad sent me this picture one time. I was just thinking about it right now but it's a picture of a little girl. The little girl, she kind of has this teddy bear, right? And she's standing and Jesus is on his knees and he has a really large teddy bear behind his back. And Jesus is like, if you give me this, I have something better for you. She can't see it. With hesitation, she's like, oh, I'm not sure, you know. But behind Jesus' back, he has something bigger for her. Maybe that's a picture that you need to allow resonate in your heart this week. Maybe you need to hop out of the driver's seat and into the passenger seat on your life because the truth is that God has something greater for you. We just surrender the things that we have. Just watch and see what happens. Amen. Well, let me pray for us really quick before we head out. Lord God, we just thank you for this time. God, we thank you that you're a good God, that you're faithful. We know that you're not looking for per- perfection, but you're looking for progression. We will never reach perfection. But we can try and we can continue looking like you, so that anywhere that we go, you would be seen, Father. You said to be the light of this world, the salt of the earth. And that's what we want to be this week, God. We're tired of running away from you because it never works. Jonah's a great testimony of that. But we're thankful, Lord God, that you love us. So today we thank you, Lord, for meeting us here. Be with us this holiday weekend. Thank you for freedom, God. We love you in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming out to Compassion Church. We love you. We're praying for you. Be inviting people to next week, church. We're going to be continuing our series on how to find the full life. Pastor Andrew will be back. Pastor Austin, excuse me. But God bless you. We'll see you then.